Alright, welcome to the land navigation series. First of all, please pardon the yapping ass dog in the background. That's my neighbor's dog. I live in town. Can't do anything about it. Sorry about that. Uh, this is going to be a land navigation uh, basics uh, on use of the lens added compass with a map. I'm just going to show you guys what uh, the government showed me. Um, I'm not a land nav expert at all. Alright, I'm going to quickly go over the parts of a lens added compass. This is a thumb loop right here. This is the housing of the compass on the outside. It's a straight edge that you can uh, mark on your map with. This is a siding wire. These are luminous dots so you can see it at night. This is the uh, what I call the siding ring. It's got a lens and a, a sight slot on it. Whenever you push this, sight, this siding ring down, the compass locks. Opens up, it frees it. This is the index line. It's where you take all your heading readings off of. Alright, first thing you need to do is uh, determine what's called pace count. You need to go out and find a football field or a known distance, something like a hundred yard distance. You want to go and walk that distance and every time your left foot or your right foot, whichever you decide to use, every time that foot, that one foot hits the ground you want to count. Whenever you get to that hundred yard, the end of that hundred yards, however many times that foot hit the ground, that's your pace count. So for instance you might have a uh, hundred and ten paces in a hundred yards okay that's very important you want to write that down somewhere and keep it and you want to do that if you can going uphill and downhill um, you want to get an average idea of how many paces you walk hundred yards over um, certain terrains pace count is mainly used for what they call dead reckoning which is what we're going to be going over which means uh, traveling cross country um, off trails um, some people call it bushwhacking all right, pace count is very important for uh, land navigation. It tells you roughly uh, how far you've gone towards your destination, which will help you keep track of where you are on the map. All right now, there's several ways to keep track of that pace count. So point B is where you want to get to, and you need to know what's called a heading to get to point B. In other words, the direction of travel in degrees. And to do that you do what's called shooting an azimuth. An azimuth is a heading or a bearing. And to do that you use your lens eye compass. Okay to shoot an azimuth there are a couple uh, ways to do it. For rough navigation and just generalized navigation you can do what's called the center hold method which I won't show that because I want to do the more accurate method. And the other method is a uh, compass to cheek method. To do that, you uh, you line the compass up in front of you, just like sighting a rifle in. This meaty part of your hand goes against your cheekbone. I'll show you how to do that. Compass to cheek method. Hold your compass cover 90 degrees. Your sighting lens at about a 45. Hold it like I showed you earlier. Media portion of your hand goes up against your cheekbone, just like sighting a rifle. Got it? Okay, that's how it should look from your view. You should be able to look through that uh, sighting picture and see your, your sight wire. Now, you aim that at whatever object you're, you're wanting to head towards. Okay, that's called shooting an azimuth. And that little viewfinder there, that little magnifying glass is there for a reason. You don't even have to take this thing off of your cheek. You can. Uh, point your eye down and see the magnified heading. See where your index line is pointing, what it's laying over, what degree mark, and that's your heading, that's your azimuth. Alright, once you have that heading or azimuth, that's what you stick to. You follow that heading until you reach point B. That's highly oversimplified, but that's the basic um, understanding of it. There will be many azimuths you shoot, uh, many direction changes, uh, depending on terrain. Anytime you uh, start out your destination and, and many times throughout the middle of your uh, navigational course you will need to uh, do what's called orient the map. That's orienting the map to the, to the ground. Um, so what appears on the map appears in front of you. And the way you do that is uh, you take your your compass base you line it up straight line. You line the straight line of the compass up with one of the, the grid lines. 
north-south grid lines, okay? Alright, you'll notice remember I did that, that uh, my indicator is pointing north, but it's not straight up and down with the index line. Okay, you want that uh, to, you want that index line and that uh, arrow to line up to north. So you turn the entire map and compass together. Okay, now they're uh, pointing north. The grid lines are pointing north also because you move the entire map. That's how you orient the map. All right, at this point, um, you know, we're going to talk about uh, declination is what they call it. I'm using a map here of Indiana, a uh, place that I went here not too long ago. Right here beside it is a, a Missouri map, um, an area that's not too far from me here. But you'll notice right here the, the compass rose. It uh, informs you what the magnetic declination is on each map. Magnetic declination is basically, um, there, there are three uh, norths. There's magnetic north, which your compass reads, and that's what MN stands for. There's grid north, which this map is laid out on. That's what the grids are pointing to the grid north. And then there's true north. Same thing here. You got true north, grid north, magnetic north. You'll notice on this one, the arrows pretty much all line up. Magnetic north and grid north are, are right in line with each other. True north is one degree to the left. On this one, you'll notice that magnetic north is three degrees to the left of grid and true north. Missouri, we don't have much uh, declination at all, so I don't usually ever worry about it. So that's why I'm using this Indiana map, because it's got a little bit of variance. For uh, practical purposes, you guys who are doing this uh, course, your declination in your area might be 10 degrees, so you need to know this. Okay, so what this means is this uh, magnetic north, what your compass is reading, is not lined up with the actual true north. you got to get it lined up. Okay, so it's telling you this, 3 degrees to the left, off. So there's a way to calculate this, and it's really easy, and I write this on all my maps, because I can't remember, I'm not smart enough to remember important things. It's called the Lars Rule. L-A-R-S. stands for left add, right subtract. If your magnetic variation is to the left, then you will add that number. If it's to the right, you'll subtract that number. So, in this case, it's to the left. It means it will add 3 degrees to our to our reading to our orientation so I will add three degrees there you go now magnetic north is lined up with true north for every azimuth you shoot and for uh, every time you orient this map you're gonna have to take that magnetic declination into account okay another really quick thing to discuss uh, while we're here I also write this on every map that I have back azimuth that is uh, finding your way back from the azimuths you shot before. You can just uh, quickly uh, follow this rule, which is uh, if your bearing or azimuth that you shot is more than 180 degrees, you subtract 180 degrees. If it's less than 180 degrees, you add 180 degrees. Alright, so if your azimuth that you shot is 20 degrees, and that is less than 180, so you add 180 degrees. So that means your back azimuth will be 200 degrees. Okay? It's important if you want to find your way home.